if I might be interested in for Spider-Man, and I went in and I kind of told them what I might be interested in doing, and, and they hated it. <laughs> Back in 1999, Sony was in desperate need of a director for their new planned Spider-Man film. Those being considered were being thrown in and out, left and right. Barry Sonnenfeld, director of Men in Black, out. Michael Bay, that's not a joke, he really was considered, out. Finally, Chris Columbus, director of Mrs. Doubtfire and Home Alone, seemed to be the most likely choice. But behind the scenes, David Fincher was in talks to direct Spider-Man's first modern outing in film. Sony had reached out to Fincher to ask for a pitch. If you're unaware, Fincher has had a stellar history of films, so it's no wonder Sony reached out. He'd been working on a pitch and his own unique take on the character, but there was a glaring problem. Fincher was not a typical fan of Spider-Man. The usual campy, comic-based story at the time was not his cup of tea. The film Sam Raimi made basically turned out to be the complete opposite to how Fincher imagined it. I wasn't really interested in the genesis. I just find the genesis to be, I just couldn't shoot somebody getting bit by a radioactive spider. I couldn't go to sleep knowing I'd done that. A kid bitten by a radioactive spider and calling himself Spider-Man afterwards was not something Fincher was going to do. If he was going to make a pitch, it needed to be different. It needed to be darker. And that's exactly what he made. But before I get into the details of what the film would have looked like, I've only been able to set aside the time to make this video thanks to our sponsor, Ridge Wallet. They were able to send me one to test it out and I've been using it ever since. It can hold up to 12 cards, room for cash, and has now removed the old bulky wallet from my pocket. Use the code CUTSHORT for 10% off or click the link at the top of the description. But here's the bonus. It comes with a 45 day full refund guaranteed if you don't like it. Even if you think you're not interested, check out the website and see. All right, back to Fincher's story. When it comes to stories about cancelled films and productions, it's very important to look deep and see what's true. Stories get blurred over time, and what you hear on Reddit or pictures you see online may not be entirely true. I say this because, reportedly, Fincher wanted Edward Norton to star as Spider-Man in the film. Which is a bit bizarre, since he would have been 30 at the time, but hey, he looked pretty damn good in 99. So if Fincher wants a gritty, older Spider-Man, then it's certainly not a bad pick. Also, Tobey Maguire was 32 at the time that he quit Spider-Man, so it's not totally unheard of. Here's the thing about this casting. I'm a bit skeptical. I've read this rumor numerous times through good enough sources, but it doesn't really add up. I decided to track this rumor back to its earliest possible source, and it landed us directly back to an article written by Slash Film founder and editor Peter Serretta. He states at the end of a brief 2009 article, I've also read somewhere rumors that Fincher wanted Edward Norton to play Peter Parker. Not sure if it's true or not. And that's it. One can assume that this is where the rumors came from because this is the first time it's ever mentioned online. To try and solve this, I reached out to Peter, but unfortunately he doesn't remember where he heard it. Which is understandable, it was all the way back in 2009. So not only is the original rumor pretty fuzzy now, if you look through Fincher's history with Edward Norton, specifically the book How 1999 Blew Up the Screen by author Brian Rafter, it's stated that Edward Norton and Fincher collided a lot on set, which doesn't scream a first choice for his newest film for me. I'm not stating that this rumor is totally untrue, but I think it should be taken with a small grain of salt. I'm not a believer in it having too much substance, but again, I'm not Fincher. When preparation for the pitch was done, Fincher went to Sony to tell them his take on the character. This was Fincher's general roadmap for the first film. In Fincher's own words, the title sequence of the movie was going to be a 10 minute music video, an opera, which was going to be one shot that took you through the entire Peter Parker backstory. Bitten by a radioactive spider, the death of Uncle Ben, the loss of Mary Jane, and then the movie was going to begin with Peter meeting Gwen Stacy. Now, skimming over Spider-Man's backstory is pretty commonplace now, but this is 99. He didn't want it to be like Raimi's eventual version at all. To him, the cheesy comic book stuff should be skimmed over with a Watchmen-like opening so we could get to Fincher's version of the character. Once the montage was over, we would meet Gwen Stacy, and the young, inexperienced Green Goblin would be introduced. This version of Spider-Man would be totally different. As Fincher puts it, it wasn't a teenage story, it was much more of a guy who settled into being a freak. This Spider-Man has already lost everything, so what more could he lose? As this grim version of Peter Parker finally starts to crawl his way back to happiness by meeting Gwen Stacy, soon after she was introduced, Fincher would then have the Green Goblin kill Gwen Stacy. Even when this lonely version of Peter Parker thought he had lost everything, his tragic story continued. As Fincher put it, 
The thing I liked about Spider-Man was the notion of this moment in time when you're so vulnerable, yet completely invulnerable. In other words, Fincher was going to put Peter Parker, a man who was basically physically invincible in the real world, through every pain he could throw on him. And Sony hated it. The idea went nowhere. Sony wasn't interested. Remember, before Sam Raimi, Sony's number one pick at the time for the director was Chris Columbus, which tells us a lot about why they hated Fincher's ideas. Columbus is primarily known for family fun movies like Home Alone, Adventures, and Babysitting. It's pretty clear that Sony had a vision of what the film would look like, and whatever the hell Fincher just told them was not in line. Chris Columbus, who was originally slated to direct the Spider-Man films, then dropped out to direct the first Harry Potter film instead. Executives at Sony, specifically Amy Pascal, was rooting for Sam Raimi at the time, and that was all that was needed. Raimi would be the new director. David Fincher was out of the question, and the pitch went nowhere. Well, except Sony actually reached out again to Fincher. Around 2010, Sony was looking to reboot Spider-Man, and funnily enough, they wanted it to be a bit more gritty and dark, more in line with Fincher's old pitch from over 10 years ago. Sony had talks with Fincher at the time, but he didn't accept any known offers for the film. But fun fact, at that exact same time, Fincher was working with Andrew Garfield day after day when directing The Social Network. And when he was asked how he felt about Andrew Garfield getting chosen for the role of Spider-Man, Fincher said, I can't imagine Garfield in spandex. I can't imagine him being comfortable. David Fincher's Spider-Man is now gone to the wind, and I would be incredibly surprised if anything of the sort ever happened. Fincher does not seem interested in any time they have attempted to make it work, nothing. But there's no arguing that his filmography is not incredibly impressive. I for one would really love to see his vision on the big screen. We've seen Spider-Man in so many different forms, I would absolutely love to see his take on the character. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you think the film would have ended up good, or are you satisfied with Raimi's version instead? Also, if you have any other ideas on videos, let me know in the comments below. I've had messages about Fincher's film in my Twitter DMs for a while, and feel free to ask questions or speak to me there. You can also follow me on Letterboxd to see my bad opinions. I'm Bren, and thank you for watching Cut Short. Sitting here in a hot closet right now, and it's, I'm, I'm starting to sweat. I gotta, I gotta get out of here.